Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going 60 bay with this 60 bay server over here. This is the AIC SB407TU, and it is absolutely massive. In fact, just to get it over here, uh, that was a whole ordeal. It actually scratched our uh, photography table. It uh, I originally had all the drives and all the stuff in here, and then I realized that uh, if I if I did that, it would be too heavy to actually go lift and put on the table. And also angling it like this is super scary. Uh, and I'm really worried that it's just gonna fall and probably take me out. So hopefully it doesn't do that. But instead the idea is we're gonna go over the hardware, then I'm gonna go put it, we're gonna do the overhead and I'm gonna go through all the different parts of the system. This system has 60 three and a half inch hard drives. It also has two Intel Xeon scalable processors. And you can add things like OCP NIC 3.0 as well as PCIe cards. And if you want just a little bit more storage, there are also eight NVMe bays that are PCIe Gen 4 NVMe bays. If that sounds like a lot of fun, it is, and let's get to it. Now for the hardware overview, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of pointing and we're gonna do a little bit of B-roll because this is a giant system. It's a little too hard to just get on one camera. So instead, the front of the system basically has the status indicator lights for all the hard drives, as well as the power button and stuff like that. But aside from that, it's pretty much just a airflow passage thing. So you just basically have the front of the chassis and it's really designed just to let airflow through. Because behind the front of the chassis, that is where all of the storage is. Now, when I put the system here and we do the top down view, I'll show you guys the really awesome cover that I think is actually top notch in this thing. But what you'll see behind here is just 63 and a half inch hard drive bays. Oh, this is gonna be delicate, but we're gonna go pull one out right here. And I just wanna kind of show you what this looks like. These little hard drive bays you're gonna see uh, are actually toolless. And to get a hard drive in one of these units, you pretty much just slide the little bracket on and then it snaps into place, which it just did there. And now you're all ready with your hard drive, ready to go put it in the system. And when a drive fails, it takes a matter of seconds just to pop a drive out and you're ready to go. Okay, now this system is super interesting because of the storage. There are two SAS expanders. One that's the front SAS expander. The second one is the rear SAS expander. And they're actually cabled so that you have a single cable connection to a you know SAS controller card. They're 12 gig SAS and they are 30 ports each. So you have like 30 in the front, which is two rows of 15 here. And then you have two rows of 15 on the rear expander, which is rear, but it's actually in, in the middle of the system. That's what it is. And that makes up our 60 top loading bays. Now behind those bays, what we have is a set of fans. Now cooling is provided by a fan partition. And these are actually hot swappable fans. And so you just kind of pull them out and they're ready to go swap. Cooling in these large hard drive chassis is always a challenge just because you have all of the, you know, you need airflow for the drives and each drive is creating heat, but then also uh, they are large. So they create a lot of obstruction for that airflow. And so cooling is always a challenge and that's kind of how AIC is doing it. Something that you notice when you're going through the system is just that the sheet metal between the drives and the CPU portion where that fan partition is, is really designed to do channel air so that way they're you know, taking the most advantage of all the static pressure and stuff of the fans and, and the system. Moving to the rear of the system, we have two exhaust fans that are at the very rear. And then we have uh, our IO, which the IO on this is super interesting, by the way. You get a COM port, but then you also get two USB 3 ports. And then, um, well, things get even more strange because you get a single gigabit management port and then all the way over in the first slot over by the NVMe SSDs, you get a VGA connection. So, uh, you know, if you wanna hook up your VGA monitor, it's, it's all the way over there. I don't really know why AIC was not able to go and put that VGA connector with all the rest of the rear IO. It's just kind of a funky little design and I think it's kind of fun. The other thing you'll see is that we have an OCP 3.0 rear slot and then you can see the slot on the inside that goes along with it. Now below all of that IO, what you'll see is we have power supplies and not just like one or two power supplies. Oh no, we have four of them. And there are actually a couple different power supply configurations. For example, you can get two 1200 watt PSUs, you can get two 1600 watt PSUs, and then you can also get the four 800 watt PSU configuration, which is the one that we have. Now these are 80 plus platinum power supplies, 800 watts each. And the idea is that you have redundant power, but not just like a one plus one redundant, you have a two plus two redundant power situation. Now on the rear of the chassis, we get the IO slots, which we'll talk a little bit more about the PCIe slots when we get inside the system. But 
On the rear, one of the cool features is just the fact that we get eight NVMe drive bays. The eight NVMe drive bays are PCIe Gen 4 capable and they are two and a half inch. So they're not using EDSFF E1 or E3S. Those are something that you know, we'll expect to see probably a little bit later. Um, but in this generation, they're two and a half inch and that's, that's plenty. Just as a quick teaser, we do have some 32 terabyte two and a half inch PCIe Gen 4 drives that are gonna be a new drive that will launch in early 2023, uh, we just can't show them because uh, we did test them in the system, but we can't show them because they're not they're not launched yet. <sighs> oh wow, that was really heavy. But I did want to show you this kind of with the overhead view just so you can see what's going on here. So the first thing that you'll see is that we have our 60 bays. We actually, there's another row that we did not get on camera because frankly, this thing is absolutely ginormous. It's 853 millimeters deep or I think that's uh, like 35 inches or so. I will just say that this is much shorter than a lot of the like 100 drive class systems that we've seen. So that is a reason that a lot of folks like the 60 bays instead of going to the 100 because you can fit them in a lot of standard racks, but uh, it's, it's a little little too big for the overhead camera view. Still, what I'll just kind of show you is that this is what it looks like, you know, when you just go and pull a drive tray out super easy. And then, uh, you know, you kind of see what that looks like underneath there. And then what you see is that we can do the fans. And so we'll pull those out real quick. So that's, uh, that's one of the hot swap fans. And then what you'll see on the system is that we do have our two third generation Intel Xeon scalable sockets. And then each one of those CPUs has eight DIMMs. Now you can run both uh, standard memory as well as you could use Optane DIMMs in here as well. Well, really that's a combination of standard memory and Optane DIMMs. I think most folks though are just gonna use the standard you know, DDR4 memory here. And I think if you want Optane, for example, as a logging device, you'd probably put that in the NVMe form factor on the back. Now, in terms of expansion, we get a total of three PCIe Gen 4 by 16 slots, and we also get two by eight slots. There's something that is kind of fun as well. Uh, if you look, there's actually two M.2 slots. So if you wanna go put boot devices or something like that, it's pretty common these days to use M.2 just because they're reliable enough that uh, you, don't, you don't necessarily need to hot swap them uh, often. What's also kind of interesting is that there is an Altera Intel uh, Max FPGA there. And I asked really quickly, like, hey, what is that? What is that Intel Terra Max 10 FPGA? And apparently it does some of the functions like for like the power and LEDs and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of what that's doing, but just kind of fun that that chip is there. And I finally was able to ask them what it does. Now connecting the front SAS expanders to the storage arrays, you know, you do something like, for example, like a Broadcom uh, SAS 9500-16i or something like that, or maybe two eight eyes or something. Um, and, and, and you have the slim SAS connector, which is a by eight connection. And it's actually really interesting just because this, these connectors give you a decent amount of backhaul bandwidth between the SAS expander and the card. But that also means that you need a by eight SFF 8654 HBA or RAID controller. Uh, and, and you need one of those ports for, for each the front and also the rear uh, SAS expander in this. Frankly, I do wish that AIC built in the SAS like 9500 8i or 16i or something like that into the system because just personally I think that it would be a lot cleaner to not have to add a PCIe HBA or RAID controller it's just you know something like like just even being able to find one of those is not that easy these days so when we had to go source it when we actually started running this thing we'll show you that in a bit um, it, it was kind of a little bit of a pain so I just kind of wish it was built into the motherboard because it would have been way easier and on the subject of wish list I also wish that there was an onboard network port and even if it was just like a one gig port, because you have the management port, which is really for the, you know, the IPMI and all the kind of like out of band management stuff. But then it would be nice to have a one gig port just for like management of whatever storage solution you're gonna use. So for example, you know, if you, if you have uh, if, if you have a storage solution where you have like a management plane or something like that, and you just kind of need either a web GUI or you need the, you know, something to go and just do API calls to, it's nice to have an out of band port for that. So that way you can keep your high speed storage ports all, you you know, dedicated to just storage and you don't have to do any management on one of those ports. Now, of course, you have plenty of room to put networking because you have the OCP 3.0 slot. You also have the by 16 slots and the by eight slots. So there's plenty of room for both HBAs and management. It would just be a little bit easier if there's like one extra one gig port. So that's my little nit there. 
Okay, so once we got that system up and running, we used TrueNAS and uh, you know, we could put our drives on there as you would expect and get many, many terabytes of data. Now, one of the bummers was that the only drives that we had available where we had 60 of them was uh, we actually had to go to uh, 18 terabyte drives. We didn't have like 20 or, or larger drives. And frankly, uh, just because they were not provided by a vendor and I had to buy them, uh, you know, and we had to buy them for STH, that, then I just kind of didn't feel like that we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about what vendor they're from because you know, frankly, uh, that costs a lot of money to actually fill up an entire chassis like this, right? But with 18 terabyte drives and 60 drives, we had just over a petabyte. So I think it was like, uh, you know, 1080 terabytes worth of storage, which is absolutely awesome, by the way. And TrueNAS, to its credit, can handle that with no problem. And then for storage, what we used was our handy NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPUs. These give you dual 100 gig ports. And the nice thing about them is that you can use the ARM cores and all the offloads and stuff that you you get with the Bluefield. But the other thing you can do, which is also very easy, is you can just use them as dual port Connect X6 uh, 100 gig NICs, and that's exactly what we did here. Now, we were not able to get full 100 gigabit speeds out of this box. Um, in fact, you know, we we're more able to get like two 25 gig simultaneous links, no problem out of this box. I think you could probably get a little bit more, um, but it does just kind of how we had set it up with ZFS. And so we didn't really try tuning it too much for that. I just kind of wanted to show that, you know, hey, it works at least. And, you know, the, the real thing that's, that are going to influence this are number one, the fact that you have SAS expander, so you don't have a direct connection between each of the drives and an HBA or something like that in this. And then the other side to it is the HBA that you're using. And then also what kind of caching and storage you're using with the NVMe base. But on the flip side, let's just call it what it is. We're able to go saturate 25 gig links with a setup that took us like, like more time to actually go and install all of the drives and the toolist trays and then put them in here than it did to get us to a running configuration, which is actually kind of awesome. Now, in terms of power consumption and noise, let's just get the noise one out of the way. This is not something that you'd wanna go run in an office next to you. It is way the heck too loud. This is definitely a data center machine. So let's just kind of get that, let's get that out there. Don't, I would never get any like dreams of like, oh, I could have this sitting in my office next to me. This is not the type of system. It's more designed for a data center deployment, which makes total sense in the segment. So in terms of power consumption, we got about 350 watts for just kind of like the base system that we had set up with all the DIMMs and, and two Xeon Platinum, uh, pretty, pretty high end actually. Xeon Platinum, uh, I think they were like 8368 CPUs. And then on this side, you know, the other thing is just the fact that you have so many drives, you have 60 drives. And so, you know, if those are five watt each, well, then all of a sudden you're talking about another 300 watts. If they're more than that, you know, that, that number goes up. So, so one of the big things by far is definitely the storage and which drive you pick. Not only were we able to put the NVIDIA Bluefield 2 GPUs, but we also were able to put NVIDIA T4 GPUs. GPUs in systems like this are actually really popular because if you think about like what a server like this in storage server like this is really used for, it's like one is what we did, which is building a ZFS you know system out of it, which is pretty easy. And it's really kind of like the low end of like what you would do with a system like this. But with dual processors and the 60 bays, there are things like Ceph and stuff where a lot of people like to run a ratio of having one core per drive. And when you have one core per drive and you have 60 drives, it means you need 60 cores plus the couple extra just for like management control plane stuff. So if you have two 32 core CPUs, that pretty much matches to something like this chassis. But the reason that I really wanted to try the NVIDIA T4 is because a pretty popular application in a lot of parts of the world is to actually take a AI accelerator, put it into a storage server like this. And one of the big things that drives storage, of course, is video. And so when you go and put video onto a storage server, something that folks like to do is put GPUs directly into the storage server so they can go do AI inferencing for like video analytics or something like that without having to go out over the network. So the idea is that you're really keeping all of that, you know, that data inside this, the server. And, you know, you're just going from like the drives, pulling the video data, going to GPU or GPUs on the back and you're not going out over the network. So that's a pretty common use case for a storage chassis like this. And this is why I wanted to validate the fact that we could actually get that working because number one, we have enough power with the four 800 watt power supplies, but also just the fact that we were able to cool that. So what do we learn with this giant storage server? 
Well, I think a couple things. So first off, um, AIC is a vendor that makes a lot of these storage servers for companies that you know sell cluster storage or things like that. So AIC definitely has a, a lot of uh, customers that they OEM like these kind of systems for. So my guess is that this is, I don't know who it's used for, but I'm guessing that there is a storage vendor or two that actually uses this exact box. I would say the fit and finish was uh, is kind of interesting. So it's definitely not like, um, you know, like, like some folks will go things like the 45 drives and like things like that. Um, this is definitely a, a couple steps beyond what a 45 drives type system would be where those kind of a little bit more um, consumer-y in terms of putting together like large storage servers. On the other hand, we did the Dell, uh, I think XE 7100 or whatever that was, which was like a hundred bays. And that um, definitely felt like it was a, um, you know, just all the fit and finish and like, like putting drives in and stuff, I think were, was a little bit nicer. It also took a little bit longer to load that system, which was kind of a pain. Uh, and they have a, a, a couple more options in terms of like how you can configure that chassis. But on the flip side also is the fact that that Dell system, it costs like a lot more, even though it's a hundred bays, but just, just the premium that you're paying is a lot more than even the AIC hundred bay. Now on that fit and finish, I just want to show you the one thing that is probably my favorite feature of this entire server. Uh, a lot of folks have different ways that they go and do this whole top chassis because you have all these, you know, these top loading drives. And so AIC has three different panels. So there's the first, you know, 30 drives that are up front. And then there's the second 30 drives and the fans. And then in the back, you have all your IO and memory and all that kind of stuff. And AIC solution is that they have these nice little latches and you just basically push the latches in and then you can open up and take off the little, uh, you know, the little cover thing. And then you have access to everything you want. And this is super easy. This is probably one of the easiest ones that I've seen in the industry in terms of being able to take the top off. So I really like that little feature. Yeah, I know that's probably the smallest little thing, but it's also just kind of a fun one. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the AIC SB407TU. This is a really cool 60 bay storage server and I hope you like just kind of looking through it with me. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, have an awesome day.